Okay, today we're not tying jigs. We are going to cook jambalaya that I've seen on uh, YouTube. So this ain't really mine, but I've been making it for a couple years and it, it comes out awesome. Uh, we got it's a half a roll of salt, just regular ground sausage. We got a full pack of bacon. Piece two quartered up chicken thighs. Some quarter inch thick sliced link sausages. Green onions green peppers, whole white onion, canned tomatoes, blackened seasoning, you can't forget that, and salt and pepper. So there's a chain, and we also got chicken broth. There's a, there's a way you have to cook this to make it come out right, and I'm gonna show you the way I've seen to do it, which was on YouTube, um, but let's move it all over to the stove, we'll get it cooking, I'll show you how I do this. Okay, so we're at the stove and the first, this has got to go down in this sequence of events. We got our pound of bacon cut in a little bitty quarter inch pieces. You want to place it in your cast iron pot like so. And we're going to leave that in there until it browns. And we want, we actually want the bacon grease off that. That's gonna be part of the base of cooking this. So stir it up, get it all broke up. All right, so we're gonna let that sit there and brown and then we're gonna go to the second ingredient. Okay, so we got our we got our bacon in the pot, we got it brown. All right, you know when you get up in the morning and you want bacon, you want a bacon sandwich, you want that crispy bacon that just kind of melts in your mouth. This is not that bacon. This is not the bacon I'm going after. This bacon is done, but it's just done. And what I'm look, wanting is that right there. The bacon's gonna stay in it. I ain't getting rid of the bacon, but I want that bacon grease. That bacon grease helps build this up. This is what you want. So next, well, hold on, I'm overstepping myself. Every time you get a layer of meat done, this is my secret. I put blackening season over top. Every layer of meat I get done, right there. All right, so we're gonna push all that bacon over. gonna take our ground sausage half a roll of ground sausage the only reason I didn't use the whole roll of ground sausage is I'm afraid I'm gonna run out of room but we're gonna put that half roll of ground sausage in there and we're gonna do the exact same thing we're gonna get it to where it's browned up so get that in your bacon grease get that cooking if you're looking for something healthy probably ain't it if you're looking for something that's good for you, this is it, because it's gonna be good for you to cook. It's gonna taste good, it's good. And the best part about it is, I can say Phil Robertson taught me how to make jambalaya. Because it's on his YouTube channel on um, the Unashamed Podcast. He breaks it down, he tells you how he makes it. So you can always look at it like that. Phil Robertson taught, you how to, taught me how to make this, which is pretty cool. Sausage is gonna brown up a little bit faster than the bacon is. That's almost smells good enough by itself right there. You want a spatula that's thick. You want one that's not gonna bend every time you go to flip it. Cause you're gonna be rolling this quite a bit. The longest part of making this is 
the prep work, cutting up all the, getting all your meat cut up, getting all your meat ready, getting your vegetables ready. That's the longest part cooking this, but it's, it's good, I promise you, it's worth it. And the recipe he uses on the Unashamed podcast was for 20. So I kind of, you know, broke it down. I put a little bit of this in, a little bit of that in it. You know, he's using like two rows of sausage, two pounds of bacon, uh, two whole onions. All right, so we got our sausage where it's pretty close to being done. Not quite. You wouldn't want to put it on a sandwich right now and eat it. But. So, next step. That's right. We're going to put some blackening seasoning on that. And we're going to mix all that together. Get our sausage, our bacon. Get all that mixed up. Next is our link sausage. Cut in strips, about pieces, about quarter inch thick. A little bit less, maybe a little bit more. It kind of depends. That goes in next. And I use two whole, two whole lengths for it. And we're gonna leave that sit in there. And we're gonna turn it, we're gonna flip it. We're gonna get it browned up a little bit. But we're gonna leave it sit in there just like that for right now. And I might even put the lid back on it and cover it up for a little while. And we're gonna give that 10, 15 minutes to cook like that. Let's put our lid on it. Let's let it build up a little bit more moisture. And then we'll go to the next ingredient. Okay, so we're going back to our next ingredient. We are going to, we have got two um, quartered up pieces of chicken thighs. Thighs, not the breast. We put the thighs in there. We left the fat on, a little bit of skin. That's going in next. Whoa, it was hot. Important step right here when you get to the chicken. Black and seasoning. Just a little bit. A little bit of salt. And now we are going to use two spoons full of garlic. We're going to put it over there underneath where that, under where the chicken is going to be. Go another half one. Can't hurt. All right, so we're going to push that chicken down in there, and we're going to let that chicken cook. We're going to give it. Let's go, probably 15 minutes for our chicken thighs, quartered up. So so far we got one pound of bacon, half a roll of normal ground sausage, not spicy, just kind of mild. We've got um, sausage links, two whole ones two chicken thighs, quartered up in small little pieces. We've been adding our blackening seasoning, seasoning, two spoonfuls of garlic and a half. So we are gonna let that sit in this pot and cook for, let's give it 15 minutes on a medium heat. And we will go to the next ingredient. Okay, so when your chicken's almost done, you wanna add in your whole onion. And we're gonna leave that onion in there. Let it cook up until it's like clear. Get it all in there. Can I send these onions? And we're gonna put a little more black bean seasoning on top of our onions. There's a chain of events that has to transpire to make this come out right. So that's what we're doing, the chain of events. Mix all that onion up, that blackening seasoning. Get all down in there, get the chicken back over there, get the chicken on its side, the pork on its side. When this is done and you're getting ready to eat, after you get done eating, be ready, you're gonna need a towel because you're gonna have the meat sweats. Guarantee it. Yeah, you will. 
you can change this with any th anything you want to. You can put deer meat in it, squirrel, rabbit, fish. Can't really go wrong. Well, I guess you could. You put broccoli in it. You screw it up pretty quick that way. So look. We're gonna let that cook for a little bit and we'll be right back for the next. All right, so next we got our chicken cooked, got our onions cooked. Uh, we are gonna add our green peppers. I put two whole bell peppers in it. Actually one was small, so I'm gonna say it was one and a half. Great value green pepper. Yeah, I'll set it. Great value green pepper. Stir all that in. Like I said, chain of events. It's all gotta happen a certain way. If not, you do it backwards, throw it away. It ain't no good. <laughs> Not really. That looks good enough to eat right here by itself. So. Don't it? Yep. Whole peeled tomatoes, one whole can. If you don't I like, them like that the whole way. ones, I'm going to get a knife and start trying to cut those up. I think next time you need to do diced. Well, I think I told you diced. No, I specifically asked. <laughs> you said. Oh. So now we're going to try to dice them while they're in the pan. Makes I even a lot offered sense. to cut them up for you. And you said no. I thought they would work. They look like they would. This is All what right. happens every time I cook. I know. When you I listen cook, to your wife. She pushes me out of the kitchen. But she didn't do it this time because I had the camera on. She'll stand in the background and she'll talk. And yep, yep. <laughs> camera hadn't been on. I'd already been sitting in the living room watching TV. She'd been finishing this up. Because she wouldn't let me cook in her kitchen. I turned the camera on. It's all to myself. It's all yours. All right, so we got them kind of diced up. So we mix all that in. It's kind of pretty looking, ain't it? It is pretty. I'm gonna take a picture of it. Say you did it? Nope. Next, we are going to add. How much is that? 48 ounces. 48 ounces of chicken broth. Flavor, flavor, flavor. Let's hope it fits. And if, squeeze the container, come on. I don't want to squeeze it and go all over the place. You won't. See? It's because you're not squeezing it. That's got to be enough. Squeeze the container. Yeah, but we start putting rice in there, it's going to start falling it's over. It's going to soak up all that liquid. <clears throat> start there. Yeah, you can always kinda, add more. There's about that much left in there. Okay. Not it wasn't the whole thing. About probably 32 about ounces. So we're gonna fold all that in, and then we are. There's another whole tomato. That's why you need a stiff spatula so you can go back and cut the stuff up you should have cut up the first time. Should <laughs> listen to your wife. How about listen to your wife the first time? <laughs> All right, so we are gonna leave that kind of like on a low, medium. We're gonna get it to where it kind of boils a little bit, gets good and hot. When do you add the rice? Once it starts boiling, it gets good and kind of hot. What about salt and pepper? Salt and pepper, I've been using blackened seasoning. I put some salt and pepper in it, but a lot of blackened seasoning. Okay. It's a Cajun food and we want it to taste like Cajun food. Why are you just wondering? I like pepper with my tomatoes. Another whole one. Just leave it. Okay. All right. So we're gonna leave that on a low, medium heat. Let it get kind of hot. We're gonna cover it, and then we are going to put the rice in. All right. So we got it to where it's kind of starting to boil a little bit, and we're gonna put in our last two ingredients right here. We are gonna put in. Two cups of rice. Crank it up just a little bit more. Just a little more than half throttle on the stove. So we are going to go. One cup of rice.
two full cups of rice. We're gonna roll it in. And the heavy spatula comes in handy. Make sure nothing is sticking on the bottom. Keep rolling it. And I think we're gonna do like another cup of rice. And then we're gonna cover it up. And we're gonna come back about every three minutes and we're just gonna keep rolling it. Just to make sure all of our rice is there. But we're gonna cut that heat back. We're gonna cut that heat back to about half, probably less than a half. About, about a mid, about a medium heat. We're gonna sprinkle that rice in too. That is it. We're gonna roll that in. We are going to roll it a couple more times. There is that rice. And you see when I rolled it back up, all that rice come back up to the top. That's where you gotta be careful. So we're gonna come back in here and we're gonna roll it every every three minutes or so, something like that. Help keep an eye on it. Check it, flip it. And we're gonna do that for about a half hour. And then we're gonna put the lid on and we're just gonna let it sit here and simmer for about 45 minutes before we even touch it. And that's where you're gonna get into an important spot. Once you get it down to where you've done your last step and you're finished with it, you gotta keep the lid on and let that heat that's already in here do all the work. Just keep rolling it. Make sure that rice don't get burnt onto the bottom. Don't check it every once in a while. Make sure your rice gets salt and it's not got crunchy spots in the middle of it. We're gonna stop right there. We're gonna kick the stove back onto just a little less than half throttle. We'll put our lid on with the cracked open just a little bit right there. And we're gonna come back and like I said, we're gonna check it every three minutes. We still got one more ingredient to put in it once it gets to where it's done. Um, and we will be back. Okay, so we got our lid off of it. We had it at a good boil. We've been rolling it. And that's the part where you're, you're going to have to babysit it. Every three minutes for at least a half hour, you're going to come in and flip it. And make sure it don't get stuck to the bottom. Look at that. Look at that. It makes me happy, happy, happy. We're going to get it all rolled over. We're gonna put it down on simmer. We're gonna keep kind of flipping it until it cools down. And we're gonna check our rice to make sure it's not, not crunchy. It's soft, it's right there at that spot. Let's turn it off. Let's get it, get it to where it's good and cool and we're gonna put the lid on it. We're gonna let the lid stay on for 45 minutes. Do not take the lid off. Somebody comes in your kitchen and says, ooh, what's cooking? Don't let them look at it. Now at this point is where I'm gonna add my last ingredient. After it quits boiling some. Keep flipping and while it's sitting there for 45 minutes is usually I'm gonna make some cornbread yeah it's looking good looking good so we got the heat completely turned off we're gonna let it sit there We're just gonna let it simmer. I want it to completely quit. I want it to completely stop. But like I said, I watched this on YouTube. I watched Phil Robertson do it, or talk about it. He told the recipe, but his recipe was for 20. Uh, I'm not sure what size quart this cast iron pot is. 
How big is it? You know? It's about that tall. About, you see how big around it is? And it makes it just perfect with the ingredients I use. It's not over full. Um, it's enough there. Six quart. Six quart cast iron pot, and there'll be enough there left over for tomorrow, and tomorrow is when it will be its best. And if you want it a little soupier than that, add a little more chicken broth to this part. Um, it's kind of up to you on Phil's recipe. He got it here, and then he put in shrimp on top of it. I did it one time with shrimp on top, and I didn't really like the shrimp in it. I think he, the shrimp would be better if he was making a, a seafood jambalaya, but it just I, I just didn't like that part, so we leave that out. So our last ingredient is our green peppers, green onions. We'll sprinkle all those in. I'm just gonna kind of spread them out. Put the lid back on for 45 minutes and then it'll be ready to eat. Like I said, this is a good time here to make cornbread or whatever you wanna go with it. But we will come back in 45 minutes. We'll look at it again and I'm pretty sure we're probably gonna be eating it. This, I promise you, is the best jambalaya recipe I've found. All right, so it has sat here and on low for 45 minutes. We're going to check it. We're going to see what we got. Take the lid off. Oh, yeah. You're going to want to check your rice. And make sure it came out soft, not crunchy, but nice, fluffy soft rice is what we want it looks like it perfect but that is how i make phil robertson's jambalaya so give it a shot it's not hard pretty easy um i can't wait to eat this but that's all i got that's how i do it and i promise you this will be the best jambalaya you ever ate